Hello and welcome. You are watching In Your Interest here on News 9 Live. I am Krishna Kumar. These are our headlines. The Indian stock market is reeling with the Sensex plunging over 4,100 points in just five trading sessions, leaving a massive 16 lakh crore rupee hole in the pockets of investors on the Lal Street. The recent crash has been triggered by the dual impact of the Iran-Israel conflict and China's stimulus package, which has unleashed a wave of selling pressure. In Thursday's session alone, Sensex dropped by nearly 1,800 points. Meanwhile, Nifty is struggling to maintain its key footing at the key support level of 25,000. Led by the Chinese government's measures to revive markets and economy, mutual funds investing in China have begun to look more attractive and have given an average returns of 21% in just a week. Chinese initiatives like a fiscal stimulus packages, interest rate cuts and targeted sector support have lifted market sentiment, driving robust fund performance. India's services sector grows at its slowest pace in 10 months in the month of September due to cost pressures and as domestic firms see a subdued rise in international orders. The HSBC India Services Purchasing Managers Index compiled by S&P Global fell to 57.7 in September from 60.9 in August, 60.3 in July and 60.5 in June. Singapore's state-owned investment company Temasek Holdings is in discussions to acquire a minority stake in India's Haldi Ram Snacks with reports indicating that this deal could value India's largest snack maker at approximately $11 billion. Temasek Holdings is reportedly looking to buy anywhere between 10 to 15 percentage of stake in Haldi Ram. This investment may pave the way for a potential IPO for the company in the future. SpiceJet deposits 10 months' worth of Provident Fund dues days after clearing all its GST payments and settling all salary arrears for its employees. This comes after the airline last month raised 3,000 crore rupees through a QIP or Qualified Institutional Payment. The QIP attracted a diverse range of institutional investors and funds including Goldman Sachs Singapore, Morgan Stanley Asia, Tata Mutual Fund and Discovery Global Opportunity. The Indian government will soon invite bids for 10 gigawatts of battery energy storage projects. The move will strengthen India's position in the energy storage space which is at a nascent stage at the moment. The European Union votes to impose tariffs of up to 45% on electric vehicles from China, a move that is set to intensify trade negotiations. tensions. Uh, though the tariffs did not get support from most of the EU states, it was not enough to block the measure. Ten member states, including France, Italy and Poland, supported the tariffs of up to 35.5% on top of the existing 10% duties, citing European diplomats, only five countries, including Germany and Hungary, voted against the tariffs, while 12 abstained. Apple is gearing up to open four more Apple stores in India as the tech giant strategically increases its investments in the country, driven by the growing demand for its products. After launching its first two stores in Delhi and Mumbai in April last year, Apple is now setting its sights on Bengaluru, Pune and the Delhi NCR for the next phase of its retail expansion. There's even talk of adding another outlet in Mumbai, highlighting Apple's commitment to tap into India's booming market. And Big Boss OTT winner Elvish Yadav and comedian Bharti Singh have reportedly been summoned by the Delhi police in an alleged app-based scam involving a fraud of over 500 crore rupees. The summons were issued after cops received over 500 complaints that many influencers and YouTubers promoted the Highbox mobile app on their pages and lured people into investing through the app. 